There will be four free response questions on the AP Precalculus exam. This video is modeled after FRQ3. It's about sinusoidal modeling. That means modeling a real world situation using a sine or a cosine function. Let's pretend it's from the 2004 AP Precalculus exam. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. A miniature golf course includes one hole that requires players to hit the ball through an opening in a large structure while a windmill rotates in front of the opening. The figure shows a windmill rotating in a clockwise direction that completes one rotation every 20 seconds. Point B is on the tip of one of the windmill blades. Point X, which does not move, represents the top of the opening in the structure. As the windmill blades rotate at a constant speed, the height of B above X periodically increases and decreases. At time t equals zero seconds, B is at its lowest position, two feet directly below X. At its highest position, B is ten feet directly above X. The sinusoidal function h models the height of B above X in feet as a function of time t in seconds. A positive value of h of t indicates B is above X. A negative value of h of t indicates B is below X. Part A. The graph of H and its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points, F, G, J, K, and P, are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated, and no axes are presented. Determine possible coordinates T, H of T for the five points F, G, J, K, and P. Let's start by making a vertical scale for this graph of H of T. We need to find the high, middle, and lowest value for h of t. Remember, h of t indicates the height above and below this point x. These numbers on the side sort of give away the high and low. 10 units above point x is the high, and 2 units below point x is the low. The middle value of h of t will be the average of these two numbers. So let's add them up and divide by 2. 10 plus negative 2 divided by 2. So that's 8 divided by 2, which is equal to 4. That's the middle value. Now let's build a horizontal scale for h of t. At t equals 0 seconds, b is at its lowest position, 2 feet below point x. So we need to pick one of these low positions and call it t equals zero. We could call this zero or this zero, or we could extend the graph one quarter period to the left and call this low point t equals zero. I'm going to do it this way so that all of the input values will be positive. However, to be clear, I could have called this t equals zero, for example, and I would have negative values of t, and according to the College Board, that would be just fine. The windmill completes one rotation every 20 seconds. Therefore, if it's at its lowest point at t equals zero, it will be at its lowest point again at t equals 20 seconds. Half of 20 is 10, and half of 10 is five. So, to find any remaining input values, we can just count by 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Now we just need to list off the coordinates for each of the five points. For example, point F is at 10, 10. Point G is at 15, 4. And point J is at 20 comma negative 2. Point K is at 25 comma 4 and point P is at 30 comma 10. That's it for part A. Remember there are other correct answers depending on where you put your t equals 0. Part B. The function h can be written in the form h of t equals a times cosine b times t plus c plus d. 
find the values of constants a, b, c, and d. Let's build a model of h of t, filling in the values for a, b, c, and d as we go along. We have memorized that the parent function y equals cosine t looks like this. So let's pick a period of h of t that looks like the parent function, and we will use that to write the equation. I'm going to base my equation on this period of h of t. Because this period looks just like the parent function, the a value will be positive. If I had chosen a period that was upside down compared to the parent function, for example, if I had chosen one like this, then the a value would be negative. The a value comes from the distance between the midline and the highest value, which in this case is 6, the distance from 4 to 10, except that sometimes the a value will be negative. Again, because I have chosen a period of h of t that is oriented the same way as the parent function, the a value will be positive. For a sinusoidal function, you can find the b value by doing 2 pi divided by the period. So in this case, b will equal 2 pi divided by 20. We know the period is 20 because we were told that the windmill completes one rotation every 20 seconds. This simplifies to b equals pi over 10, which I will put right here. The c value will always be the opposite of the starting input value for the period that you are using to write the equation. In this case, the period we chose begins at 10, so the c value will be negative 10. If you choose a different period, then your c value will be different. For example, if you chose this period, your c value would be negative 20 instead of negative 10. Finally, the d value simply corresponds to the midline. So in this case, the d value is 4. On the AP exam, you can either leave your answer as an equation with the values for a, b, c, and d filled in, or you can list them out separately like this. Part C, refer to the graph of h in part a. The t coordinate of k is t1, and the t-coordinate of p is t2. In other words, here's t1, and here is t2. C part 1. On the interval from t1 to t2, which of the following is true about h? Is h positive and increasing, positive and decreasing, negative and increasing, or negative and decreasing? On the interval from t1 to t2, h of t is definitely positive because all of the output values are between positive 4 and positive 10. Also, from t1 to t2, h of t is increasing. You can see how it's rising from left to right. So, h of t is positive and increasing on the interval from t1 to t2. So, the answer is A. C, part 2. On the interval from t1 to t2, Describe the concavity of the graph of h and determine whether the rate of change of h is increasing or decreasing. Caution! The wording of C part 2 has changed. In 2024, when they first administered the exam, the wording was like this, and you were allowed to answer with a single word. Now the question is more detailed, and we will have to answer with a sentence. First, let's describe the concavity of the graph of h on the interval from t1 to t2. At a glance, we can see that h of t is concave down on the interval from t1 to t2. In Unit 1, we learned that wherever h of t is concave up, the rate of change will be increasing, and wherever h of t is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing h of t is concave down on the interval from t1 to t2, so the rate of change of h is decreasing. Always be very specific to get full credit. Make sure you say the rate of change of h is decreasing. Don't just say the rate of change is decreasing. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.